Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hey, I believe that we are live. I see the participant count increasing. And if that's the case, we are joined from all over the world. Let me say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to Peace Corps Global. Hey, if you are hearing me or seeing me, why don't you give me a shout out in the chat? Would love to see who is chiming in from the round the world. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Hey, Kenya, welcome. Welcome, excellent peace and blessings to everyone. Greetings from Dakar, Peace Corps Colombia. Hello, hello, welcome. We've got Kosovo in the house. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hey, Portugal. Yes, indeed. I've got a shout out from Virginia and Ecuador and New York. Hey, Bill from Florida and Audrey from San Diego. So excited to see everyone that is joining in to this global town hall event and the numbers are still climbing. So welcome. Come on in, everyone. Peace and blessings to everyone. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hey, Karina from Phoenix. Hey, we got Bet from Long Island, New York. Welcome. Hey, Tanzania. Welcome, North Carolina. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Okay, we've got some RPCVs from Lesotho. Welcome. Come on in, every. One so glad to see everyone that is joining us from around the world. This is going to be a really, really great day. I am so excited. Hey, Malawi. Hey, Detroit. Yes, keep it coming. Keep giving me a shout out where you guys are calling in from. Hey, Penny from Rwanda. So good to see everyone. Good afternoon from Kentucky and hello from New Jersey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to just keep this going for a few more seconds just to make sure that we have everyone that uh, should be a part joining in and hearing us and seeing us loud and clear. I wish everyone joy. I wish everyone happiness. Most of all, I wish everyone peace, peace and blessings. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, I believe we should go ahead and good get started. Yes, indeed. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Kelly from the Office of Management here at Peace Corps headquarters, and it is my pleasure to be your MC for today's event. And let me be the first to say happy Peace Corps week. We are so happy to have you join in with uh, this week's celebration. We have a very exciting hour planned an hour where we will each have an opportunity to connect with the world. But first, allow me to explain a few features of this webinar. Right first, this event is being recorded. We will share the recording on our website later this week. Second, um, <clears throat> live captioning is available and you will find the link for that captioning in the chat. Next, we have Jessica and Amber with us today, who will provide American Sign Language interpretations throughout the program. And we also have live French and Spanish interpretations today. And to hear the French and Spanish audio, please tune in to the language channels. Those instructions should be on your screen. Yes, they are. And now without further ado, it is my honor to hand the floor over to Peace Corps Director Carol Spahn for her keynote address. Director Spahn. Great, thanks so much, Tim, and happy Peace Corps week, everyone. Um, I really love this opportunity to connect with the entire Peace Corps family and really share with you what's been going on in the agency and how we are looking ahead and just take this moment to reflect on all of the, the beauty and magic that Peace Corps um, brings around the world. 
uh, this time last year, I was was thinking about it, and we've been through so much as as an agency, as a global community, um, and, and it was just a year ago that we were announcing the issuance of twenty four uh, of invitations to twenty four countries for volunteers to return following our two year suspension of overseas service due to COVID, and that was just such a, a tremendous breakthrough time. And you know, when Peace Corps breaks through, we, we break through. And I am incredibly proud to announce that we now have over 1,200 volunteers back in 51 countries just a year later, um, with others soon on the way. And this epic return just simply would not have been possible without the entire Peace Corps family, our staff, our counterparts, our host families, supporters like you, our incredible staff here at Peace Corps. And all of the volunteers who were the first going back after COVID, who were those that waited for two years, three years, some who had been um, evacuated and held on and said, I really just want to do this. It's important to me. And um, really stepping up during this time when so much has changed in the world. So I am just um, incredibly grateful to be a part of this amazing organization that has so much heart. Um, so thank you. Thank you all um, for, for being here with us today and for being with us every day along this journey. Um, so, you know, again, reflecting on the journey, I am regularly asked, hey, are, are volunteers going back to the same Peace Corps? Are we just returning the way we left? Or have we really taken this opportunity, not only to build stronger systems, but also to look at how we need to adapt um, with everything that has changed in the world. And I wanna answer that question for you all today um, because the clear answer is no, we are not going back in the same way that we left. Our call at this moment is to continue to build on our strengths, all of those things that make Peace Corps what it is and look at ways to expand our impact. And just how we are doing that is what I would like to share with you all today, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a teaser. It involves three core components, youth, equity, and modernization slash efficiency. And we'll get into a little bit about what each of those mean for us. But first, let me say that Peace Corps Week is not just a week to celebrate our history or our accomplishments. We have to start by honoring what is that magic? What are those beliefs that members of the Peace Corps network hold dear and the goals we have in common? It's really how we show up in the world, what we believe in, and who we are as the Peace Corps network. Articulating just what these beliefs are is so difficult, but here is our attempt. And I invite you to add your additions or reactions into the chat. So as the Peace Corps, we believe that every intercultural relationship can create the fabric of world peace. We believe that there is wisdom and expertise around the world in every culture and every community. We believe that we grow through intercultural relationships that are built on mutual respect, trust, and openness. We believe that we must all work to advance equity and inclusion. We believe that we must be responsive to national, host country, and community priorities. We believe that service with others is critical absolutely critical to deepening the bonds of our global community, both abroad and at home. And anchored in all of these beliefs is this underlying ethos that every intentional action can make a difference, but often in ways that we can't see, and often in ways that we can't see in that moment. And I will say that show up years and, and even decades later. So as we think about these beliefs and this ethos that binds us together as a global Peace Corps community, I want to remind us that the Peace Corps network 
is more than the over 240,000 returned Peace Corps volunteers. It is also tens of thousands of Peace Corps staff who have worked with the agency and become part of the Peace Corps family, as well as millions of host family members, students, and community counterparts. This is a powerful, powerful network of grassroots change makers. If we think about ourselves and stretch ourselves to really think about what we can do as a network. These beliefs have guided our work for the last 62 years, but the world that we exist in today is fundamentally different from the world that Peace Corps existed in, in 1961. Now this is somewhat obvious, but let's really zoom out and, and take a look at just a few examples. So first of all, extreme poverty has dramatically decreased. In 1960, 54% of the world lived in extreme poverty, 54%. Now that number is 10%, still too high, but dramatic improvement. We also see that undernourishment is declining and that HIV AIDS related deaths continue to decline year after year. And the world's population is more educated. In 1960, only about 54% of people in the world had basic formal education. By 2015, that number increased to 86%. This is all great progress. And the Global Peace Corps Network has contributed to these development outcomes, often at the last mile, but in some of the most sustainable ways and in some of the most underserved communities. As we look ahead, we have to know and we have to consider just how much the world is changing around us. We have conflicts happening across and within countries. Just to provide two examples, last week marked the one year anniversary of war following Russia's unjustified, unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. And the conflict in the Tigray region of Ethiopia continues to impact the region as a whole and our hearts go out to all of the people who have been impacted in so many ways due to civil unrest and conflict in these and other areas around the world. Many of the places where we work are also being disproportionately affected by climate change. From Madagascar to Fiji, people's livelihoods are being threatened and they are feeling that threat every day and it's changing year on year. There are struggles for equity happening in many countries. We are facing political divisiveness, including here in the US and in countries like Peru. And let us not forget the biggest shock to our global system with COVID. It's one of the biggest disruptors of our lifetimes. And it's amazing how the human spirit can get used to and adapt to something that was such a shock to the system. And it's important we zoom out and really think about what that means for us as we move forward. The status quo has been disrupted and many of the development gains that were made over the past decades, many of those have been reversed or stalled. So this is a critical time. There are urgent, urgent needs and today we have a profound opportunity to really look at how we can help reshape and rebuild our world after this tremendous global shock. As I think about the urgency, it is critical that we act now because the pace of change is only going to get faster. In fact, it is assumed that today's pace of change is the slowest we will experience for the rest of our lives. Let that sink in for a moment. Today's pace of change is the slowest we will experience for the rest of our lives. We see it in the climate data. We see it in the rate of civil unrest across countries. The number of disruptions uh, from 1960 to today have just increased year on year and continue to do so. So as we return volunteers to a strengthened Peace Corps, one with additional support systems, taking into account a post-COVID environment, um, innovations and new service modalities, we must also think about ourselves and our potential differently. 
And it's important as we do that, that we acknowledge that 62 years later, Peace Corps is so much more than one volunteer in one community for two years. Instead, we are a global network of individuals from over 140 countries who work together at the grassroots level, who are not um, willing to sit on the sidelines and who are committed to being agents of progress. And after 62 years, we have an incredible opportunity to leverage this global network in ways that spans distances and decades. So how do we stand on what is an incredibly solid foundation and reach even higher? We looked at our logical project frameworks. So this was a multi-year effort involving input from host communities, from counterparts, government institutions. When we had volunteers in the field, they were also involved. So from the ground up, working with our partners, asking them what was important to them, where was the Peace Corps niche most useful in supporting the goals of our host countries. We went through a multi-year process to do this with every framework in every country. And when you consolidate all of that work, 80% of our frameworks target youth, meaning our partners have asked us to support young people and they see our value as working with youth so that we can reach higher, building on our strengths to really harness the power of youth. And this work is across all of our sectors and it's not at the exclusion of other groups but it will contribute incredibly to the sustainability and local ownership goals of our work and the work that was really expressed as priorities by our hosts. So how can we do this and how can we harness the power of youth and why youth? Well, I already explained that it's what our countries have asked for, but pulling back right now, approximately 90% of youth ages 15 to 24 live in developing countries. And this is the largest generation of youth in history. The median age for about half of our Peace Corps countries is 25 or younger. Take a look at that list for a moment. It is really striking when you look at the median age in some of the countries we serve. And as you look forward, this is called a youth bulge. It is happening right now and it will go on into the future. And this bulge can go in two directions. Undereducated and underskilled youth can lead to mass unemployment and social or political unrest. Or we can support youth with leadership skills and a true sense of agency so that they can add value to their country's economy and lead on community issues. So our imperative is not only to intentionally build youth leadership and technical skills, but also to look beyond the school and look at how we can link young people to opportunity. And if we continue to be intentional about this work, our impact, our combined impact will be more than anecdotal success stories and best practices. It will be the systemic way that we fulfill our mission. Now, that was, that was a lot of words and there's a lot that is behind what I'm saying now. And I wanna just bring it to life um, through a hypothetical story as we look forward so that we can all picture what this could mean for Peace Corps. So I want you to meet Sophia from Kyrgyz Republic. Sophia is a part of Peace Corps new integrated and holistic approach to youth programming. So imagine that Sophia is trained by Peace Corps alongside an education volunteer named Monique. Together, they teach English grammar at a secondary school and lead school youth activities for two years. At the completion of their side-by-side -side service, both Sophia and Monique earn a TEFL certificate, allowing them to continue language teaching as a profession. Monique, the volunteer, moves back to the United States She's hired by an NGO and teaches English to recently resettled refugees. Meanwhile, back in her community in the Kyrgyz Republic, 
Sophia offers private language lessons, stays in contact with the Peace Corps, and the Peace Corps program manager continue, continues to engage with Sophia, enrolling her in Peace Corps Kyrgyz Republic's new youth network. So she goes on to attend trainings that connect her with other youth counterparts and add to her technical and leadership skills. And Peace Corps countries all over the world support these youth networks. So Sophia also meets counterparts from other countries via virtual workshops and seminars, during which she learns more about project management, budgeting, resource identification, and more. She travels to a regional Peace Corps Youth Network Conference in Thailand, where she and other counterparts discuss global issues and ways to engage in community service. Through all of this, Sophia realizes that she's passionate about gender equity and combating gender-based violence. Because she's a youth counterpart, let's imagine that she is eligible and uniquely eligible for grant funding from the returned Peace Corps Volunteer Friends of the Kyrgyz Republic group, which her former volunteer Monique is a part of. So she applies and is awarded a small amount that enables her to conduct GLOW and BRO camps for adolescents in her community, which get even more youth involved in her community project. In recognition for her contributions and leadership, she is nominated by Peace Corps to the Department of State's International Visitor Leadership Program and comes to the US to visit organizations dedicated to preventing gender-based violence. When Sophia returns to the Kyrgyz Republic, she starts an NGO in her community that facilitates interactive programming focused on gender norms, life skills, healthy relationships, and gender-based violence prevention. So this is certainly not the end of Sophia's story, but I'll stop there. And I hope that through this story, you can understand what we're working towards. So we are working towards investing in Sophia first as a side-by-side -side service youth counterpart where she earns a recognized certificate. And later we continue to invest in her and to support her by linking her to opportunities, some of which may be within the Peace Corps network, and some of which may be with other youth groups, youth serving groups in that country through other organizations like USAID, State Department, or other entities. And all of that helps to empower her to reach her full potential as a local leader in her community and beyond. I'm just gonna let everyone sit with that for a little bit because it is, and I, I hope you see that Sophia's story is really truly leveraging on the strengths of what Peace Corps brings to the table and challenging us to dig deeper, to look further about going beyond that volunteers to your service and linking those change makers that volunteers engage with in the far reaches of countries around the world and linking them to opportunity and linking them to each other as grassroots change makers. Well, I'm sure you are as excited, or I hope you're as excited about the prospect of a more systematic approach to youth empowerment. These changes will not happen overnight. Uh, these kinds of shifts do take time, but from the research and feedback that has gone into this vision, we have found that this integrated approach isn't just exciting, but it also has the potential to address some of the power inequities that are inherent in our structures and provide greater voice to people from underserved communities, not only within Peace Corps, but with larger development agencies. It has the potential to link youth leaders to opportunity, leading to even more locally led development. It has the potential to professionalize service with certifications and technical skills, and ultimately improve sustainability. And What's really important in terms of our ability to act now, we have the legislative capacity, um, we have the tools, we can start doing this today. So for the next two years, we will start small with pilots in a few countries, with volunteers and counterparts. We will learn from those experiences and we will expand the models with more countries, more variety and more volunteers. And then we will look to merge these models, refine, and expand over time. So what I've shared today 
is all embedded in our strategic plan. This is not replacing our strategic plan. Instead, through this vision, we are looking at where our strategic plan is taking us. We've explored the big picture. We've zoomed out. We've looked at what's happening around us in terms of, of demographics and trends and to better understand the context of today so that we can make informed decisions about what's possible and how we can be most effective in the future. We have all seen that the world has changed and the Peace Corps is responding and evolving along with it. So here's what I want you to remember from this presentation. The Peace Corps network around the world is powerful. And I cannot tell you how many times I have been asked why volunteers and staff and counterparts associate with the Peace Corps so long after their service has concluded. And there are so many answers to that question that really boils down to, to all that the Peace Corps stands for and how we show up in the world. And it is our time to be bold as a network and to challenge ourselves as we double down on our investment in youth to systematically provide opportunity, as we lean into our ethos and build on our core strengths to address power imbalances, and as we streamline and standardize our systems so that we can respond to an increasing pace of change. So this Peace Corps Week, I just want to say it has been an incredible journey. It will be an incredible journey. This is an amazing, amazing organization with people, as I said at the beginning, care deeply about how we do what we do. We care about the integrity and the ethos of how we show up in the world. And I welcome your comments, your feedback. Um, I'm incredibly grateful to all of you to have you with us on this journey, because I really do believe that if we are thoughtful and intentional, we can leverage the magnitude of our global Peace Corps network and connect with the world in even greater and more impactful ways. So today I am very excited that you will hear three of our, hear from three of our country teams that are doing that right now. And you'll learn about how these teams are already working to harness and lift the potential of youth as community leaders. So sit back, enjoy the ride. Thank you for choosing today and every day to connect with the world, to connect with Peace Corps, and to be a part of this amazing organization. Thank you and back to you, Tim. Awesome, thank you, Director Spahn. And you're right now to get a glimpse on the work that's happening around the world today by Peace Corps volunteers, the staff, partners, and community members, we will hear from three Peace Corps countries. And to begin our Around the World, let's jet on over to Peace Corps Nepal in our Europe, Mediterranean, and Asia regions. Take it away, Peace Corps Nepal. Thanks, Tim. Hello and namaste, everyone. Uh, my name is Troy Kafroth. I'm the Peace Corps Country Director in Nepal. Um, I'm also a former volunteer here. I see many Nepal RPCVs in the chat. So, Tapai Lai Swagatam, it's good to see you. Along with some colleagues, I look forward to introducing you to our work in Nepal. Uh, before beginning, I want to provide a brief orientation to the country. Located between India and China, Nepal is approximately 30 million people and has three distinct topographies. In the north, the high Himalayan mountains, including Mount Everest. In the middle, the mid hills. And in the south, the fertile flatland called the Terai. During Peace Corps history working in Nepal, volunteers have served in almost all parts of the country. In the last 10 years, since 2012, however, Peace Corps work has happened primarily in the Mid Hills region with our placement districts highlighted in blue on the map. Now a little bit about Peace Corps history in Nepal. We're proud to be one of the oldest Peace Corps programs with the first volunteers arriving in 1962. Uh, since that time, nearly 4,000 Americans have arrived to serve as volunteers. Over the past 60 years, volunteers have worked in a variety of sectors, including health, banking, urban planning, forestry, 
engineering, and wildlife conservation, among others. However, the two largest sectors for volunteer service have always been agriculture and education, and those are the two sectors we continue to support today. We'll now provide some additional details on those projects, and to lead the first discussion, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Anuja Lamsal, who will describe our food security work in the agriculture sector. <clears throat> Thank you, Troyji. Namaste, everyone. Hi, I am Anuja Lamsal. I've been working as a food security program specialist at Peace Corps for more than eight years. Peace Corps has been implementing the food security project since 2012, with more than 257 volunteers serving in this sector. The project has impacted more than 15,000 smallholder farmers, out of which 60% were female. As you can see in the images at the bottom of the page, food security volunteers promote high value, low volume agriculture products, such as fruit trees, mushroom, honey, ginger, and turmeric in rural communities. Agriculture-based income generation and nutrition promotion among women are also key initiatives of the project. Next slide, please. When volunteers were evacuated in 2020, Peace Corps continued to reach the communities through virtual service. In virtual service, US participants spent tentatively five to 15 hours working with Nepali counterparts. Since 2021, in Nepal, we have completed a total of 15 virtual service projects. To highlight one such engagement under the food security project, I would like to invite Ms. Ali to share her experiences. Ali served not only as in-person food security volunteer prior to the evacuation, but also as a virtual service participant. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ali. I'm a former Nepal Peace Corps volunteer who served from around this time four years ago in February 2019 to late March 2020, evacuated from Nepal during COVID-19. My background is in nutrition, regenerative agriculture, and global development. During the virtual service, I worked with Hom Tapa, an organic farmer in Nepal. On this project, Homji and I were able to discuss core orchard management and agricultural concepts that he requested. Our fundamental topics included pruning, site selection, airflow, water resource management, and soil health. For our virtual lessons, we used the share screen function on Zoom while I played videos, analyzed photos, and shared my own PowerPoint slides, which in turn prompted our discussions on the desired topics of the week. I was immediately impressed by his zest for accumulating knowledge and excitement to remain engaged with the Peace Corps. Our work together created an unforgettable bonding experience for the both of us. I was also excited to reconnect to the beloved Peace Corps Nepal staff. They are a core image in my mind when I reflect back to my time with the Peace Corps, and it was a privilege to have reconnected with them, the Nepali language and Nepali culture again. Although not able to be with us in real time, we do have a short video from Hom Bahador to provide his view on the Peace Corps. American volunteer Kerry Johnson Rafatul Pine is done, the Sat Hamas and Sajikaran Gradin Boyo, Taratikema, Corona Kumahamar Ligada, Sudes Pitan Boyo, Tarapani, Piscura, Nepalku, BSP program, Andragat, Ma, BSP participant, Andrew Philip, Raeli Mo Sanga, Jodine Mokapai, Jasantargat, Mailewar Sanga, Matu Vastapan, Targari Heti Vastapan, Padulko Bed Burwako, Pooning, Training, Jasta Kuraruma, Jodine Mokapai. र यस कुराहरु मैले जीवनमा अझसम्म सिक्न नसकेका कुराहरु धेरै कुराहरु सिक्न पाए यसको लागि म पिस्कोर लाई धेरै धेरै धन्यवाद दिन्छु थ्यांक यू नाउ आई लाइक टु टर्न इट ब्याक ओभर टु ट्रोय अ थ्यांक यू एली एन्ड अनुजा आई वर सो एप्रिसिएटिव अफ एलीज सर्विस बोथ हियर इन नेपाल इन पर्सन एन्ड थ्रू द भर्चुअल सर्विस एंगेजमेन्ट 
I'll now turn our attention to the Peace Corps Nepal's other major project, the English Education Project. Working, as I said, working in schools has been a mainstay of the program here over the past 60 years. I often meet Nepalis, including senior government officials who were taught by volunteer teachers. Volunteers work in government schools in rural and peri-urban settings, and not only teach English, but also work with English teachers to transfer skills. At the bottom of the page, you can see photos of recent volunteers and Nepali counterparts working in Nepali schools. Importantly, we seek to place volunteers in schools that serve underrepresented communities, and we have a strong emphasis on girls' education and participation in education. In addition to the food security and English education projects, next slide please, um, Peace Corps has also received approval to implement a Peace Corps response program, a service model in which more experienced volunteers come for high impact shorter term assignments. After completing a needs assessment with the government of Nepal, we'll be implementing a response program next year in these areas, tourism promotion, information technology in schools, curriculum development, and agricultural education at the university level. We expect to begin recruiting for the first group by this summer, with that group arriving in mid-2024. Finally, as I close the Nepal section, I want to talk about what's next. The team here in Kathmandu is very excited to welcome the next group of volunteers to Nepal in June of this year. This group will be the 208th group of volunteers to come to Nepal. Um, they will work in the agriculture and education sectors in six districts of the country. Additionally, we are currently accepting applications for the 209th group scheduled to arrive in January of next year. I want to encourage anyone listening who has interest in serving in Nepal to contact me, Anuja, or any of our colleagues. We're happy to answer questions about our two-year programs, as well as the new Peace Corps response programs. Our contact information is shown on the slide. Thank you so much for joining today to hear about Nepal, and thank you for celebrating Peace Corps Week with us. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Team Nepal. Excellent work. And thank you, Ali, for your service and participation in the virtual service project. Uh, we also loved hearing from your counterpart, Ham, about uh, how meaningful your partnership has been, truly. Thank you for that. Um, and now for our next stop, we will be dropping over to the Africa region for a presentation from Peace Corps Senegal. Over to you. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Jamangam, Jamtan, Medejam, bonjour. Greetings from Peace Corps Senegal. I'm Joanne Yeager Sala, and I'm the Peace Corps Senegal Country Director. We're thrilled to join you today from sunny and somewhat cool Dakar. Peace Corps is celebrating our 60th anniversary in Senegal, where over 4,250 volunteers have served over the years. Before evacuation, we typically had around 300 volunteers in country at a time, and those volunteers focus on agriculture, environment, health, and econ community economic development. We currently have 25 volunteers in country who are completing their in-service training at our TIAS Training Center, a beautiful state-of-the-art training center that can accommodate up to 70 trainees at a time. We are expecting another group of 30 trainees in just two weeks. Our expert training staff will be busy until June when the next cohort of volunteers will be sworn in and move into their new communities. Volunteers in Senegal are encouraged to learn some basic French before coming to country, because once trainees arrive in country, it's all about learning local languages like Wolof, Serer, Pular, and Bambara. We believe that learning local language is a shortcut to better understanding local culture and effectively connecting with host communities. Our three month long in-country training programs expose trainees to important cultural safety, health and technical information that will create a necessary and critical foundation for successful two year service. Senegal is known as the land of Taranga, a, world, a Wolof word meaning hospitality. Anyone serving in Senegal quickly appreciates the healthy and flavorful food, the vibrant local dress, exciting music and dance, which is only outdone by the lively and jovial human interactions evident everywhere and between everyone. Senegal is a politically stable country 
and is seen as a beacon in the region for its political and religious tolerance, entrepreneurial spirit, and solid infrastructure. I served as a Senegal Peace Corps volunteer 40 years ago, and my Peace Corps experience in Senegal shaped my career and has made a lasting and foundational impact on my life. With that, we're pleased and excited to share with you two examples of the work that is happening right now at Peace Corps Senegal. Dr. Elias Cham, our environmentalist specialist and team lead will introduce the important efforts underway to address climate change in Senegal and share how volunteers are working to address environmental management. Elias, over to you. Thank you, Joan. It is a pleasure to join you today to talk about Senegal Environment Program. Senegal is an ecologically diverse and beautiful country with many ecological zones and hundreds of fish, mammal, birds, species. We also have red fat and irrigated agriculture. But Senegal, Senegal is also experiencing natural and human induced environmental degradation this degradation affects ecosystems and undermines people's well-being, food security, and the sustainable management of natural resources. These challenges are made worse in a context of climate change, with irregular rainfall, increased temperatures, and rising sea levels. I joined the Peace Corps four years ago to work with volunteers because I believe in the power of the Peace Corps approach to development that prioritizes people to people development, where the emphasis starting from the community is focused on human connection. My team and I work closely with communities to set the stage of volunteers for work with schools and local technical partners, such as National Forest Service. We support volunteers to develop the required and desired skills and expertise for an impactful service. In Senegal, we are contributing to the Peace Corps climate change strategy. It is done through promoting climate literacy for youth and adults, and by working on implementing appropriate climate adaptation measures through building capacity and the implementation of small grant projects. Only two months after swearing in, current volunteers of the environment program have already started environment education clubs in schools, three nursery, and one-on-one -on -one teaching sessions. That's why I am thrilled to introduce you to three of our volunteers, Andy, Nafisa, and Evan, so you can hear directly from them about their experience in Senegal. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nafisa, and I'm an environment volunteer in Senegal. Hi, my name is Andy, and I'm an environmental volunteer. Hi, my name is Evan, and I'm an environment volunteer in Senegal. It's important to work in the environmental sector in Senegal because Senegal is facing a lot of different environmental issues caused by climate change. For me, being an environment volunteer is about uh, sharing with the community my knowledge and learning all the knowledge that they have um, and working on the, the challenges and um, the activities that they're interested in um, regards with the environment. I run a few training sessions with some of the um, counterparts in my community. Um, there are a bunch of people who are training to be in the Forest Service and um, so we, we ran some trainings on how to make um, a nursery bed or how to do compost. I'm working with one of my work partners who's a school science teacher to create a school tree nursery and a school garden. Um, and I'm also working with several work partners at a community garden to help transplant different vegetables and improve farming techniques. I run an environmental club at two of the schools in my site. Um, in this particular school, I was teaching about the water cycle, and so I developed a game so that the students could understand uh, the way that water moves on our earth. A lot of my work 
is centered around trees and reforestation. And so I've been working on compost for planting trees um, and also gathering and collecting seeds in the area. Which means even if you have a lot of birds, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't still plant the millet. Um, so even if there are obstacles in the way, you should still go ahead and um, make the jump. Bala nga lah jai, lah lek, which is basically before you sell the porridge, eat the porridge. So basically, you know, practice what I preach uh, before I go out and facilitate trainings and educate people on different ways to incorporate agroforestry technologies. I should practice them myself and know what I'm talking about. Uju bajahu jogufa, which means as long as you have seeds, you know, don't move. Um, so as long as there's work to be done, stay where you are, which I think translates pretty well for the environmental work that we do here. Hi, my name is Nafisa. Thank you, Elias, Nafasa, Evan, and Andy. We are grateful to have volunteers back in Senegal and look forward to welcoming more volunteers to countries across West Africa to help us combat climate change. The opportunity to serve and work with communities to address climate change is an amazing opportunity for anyone considering Peace Corps service. So the opportunity to serve and develop professional skills in an inter intercultural environment allows many different types of volunteers to contribute to the Peace Corps mission. And we are grateful for all of the volunteers who choose to serve in Senegal. While, while our agriculture and environment programs are full for this next cycle, Applications for Senegal's health and community economic development programs are due by August 1st. But if your heart is set on agriculture and environment, our next deadline for that program is March 1st, 2024. Otherwise, I encourage you to look to our neighbors in the Gambia or Guinea who have similar programs or even consider worldwide availability. Please explore our webpage for application details and I sincerely hope that you consider joining Peace Corps in the near future. Merci, Jerry Jeff, Joe Back to you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Peace Corps Senegal. You know, for me, it is, it's, it's fascinating to see the different projects underway, you know, and to hear from the community partners, the volunteers, the staff, and especially your collaboration on climate action and beyond. Great work, guys, really. All right, now, we just have one more layover in our Inter-Americas and Pacific region where we will hear from our Peace Corps Dominican Republic staff and volunteers. All right, DR, please share with us what you guys are up to. Thank you, Tim. Buenos dias, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Jose Miguel de Leon. I am the Youth in Development Program Specialist here in the Dominican Republic. I'll be presenting with Janelle, Youth in Development uh, Program Volunteer. We are very happy to show to you what our volunteers are doing. Now I'm gonna talk about the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is a beautiful Caribbean country with a very diverse ethnicity, including Spanish, African, Jews, Cocolos, among others. It has a tropical climate with warm and welcoming people. The Peace Corps office in the Dominican Republic was established in 1962. The office has been in the country for 61 years. Over 4,851 Peace Corps volunteers have served at the country to date. Our current programs are education, youth and development, community economic development. And currently we have 37 volunteers that are serving in our country. Now the first sector that I wanna talk is education. The purpose of this sector is to raise the academic success of primary school students through integral school literacy initiatives. Our volunteers focus on improving childhood literacy by supporting um, teachers from primary schools. They implement effective strategy for classroom management 
literacy instruction and student-centered learning. We are the only Peace Corps program in the world that teaches literacy in Spanish. This sector partners with the Ministry of Education of the Dominican Republic. Now I will pass to Janelle. She's gonna talk about the youth in development sector. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jose Miguel. And let me just say that it is such an honor and pleasure to be with you all here today. So youth development is the sector that I'm currently serving in here in the Dominican Republic. And to elaborate on some of the points made earlier by Director Spahn regarding youth programs, the purpose of this sector is to empower Dominican youth to transition into healthy, productive, civically engaged citizens and support country service providers. The youth project works with 10 to 24 year olds co-facilitating life skills, employability skills, and sexual and reproductive health education, encouraging regular participation in clubs and mentoring youth. We support extracurricular activities such as team sports and volunteering or service activities to promote constructive use of free time and civic engagement in the community. Youth development volunteers also engage parents and caregivers regarding positive parenting. Next, we're going to speak about community economic development. The purpose of this sector is to increase sustainable economic development opportunities for Dominican communities. Volunteers work with high school students and small business owners to increase their financial and business skills. The partners of this sector include the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Small Businesses. In regards to community connections and community integration, as volunteers, we cannot do our jobs without the support of our Dominican counterparts and community members. The counterparts are our colleagues who work with us every day to, ach to achieve the desired goals. The host families are an essential element of our integration because they open their hearts and their homes to receive us. They make us feel welcomed as if we are another family member and a part of the family. Now we have a video made collectively by some of us volunteers, including volunteers from each sector, myself being one of them. As the first country to receive volunteers a year ago, we are very excited to show you a video of us in action, highlighting our integration in our communities and our work. Bienvenidos, welcome to the Peace Corps Dominican Republic. Youth Development. Natalie is a youth development volunteer currently serving in the Eastern region of the DR. She began a running group during community-based training along with other youth development volunteers, which sparked interest in some kids in the community, including her host siblings to occasionally join them. Janelle is serving in the Eastern region of the DR and for World AIDS Day on December 1st, she gave a presentation to the youth at school regarding the basics and history of HIV and AIDS. During community-based training, the youth development volunteers held a youth camp that included different activities regarding environmental awareness and education. Nicole is seen here leading one of these sessions. Education. Catherine is an education volunteer serving in the eastern region of the DR. When asked about her work so far, Catherine states that co-teaching first grade with Professora Irene has been a highlight of my week. She continues to use some of the activities after my short session is finished. Megan is an education volunteer serving in the eastern region of the Dominican Republic. And when asked about the safety and security of her site, she had this to say. Thanks to Peace Corps staff, trainings on safety and security, my host family and community members, I have felt safe and included in sight throughout my first three months of service. Estefania has noted the impact of the work done in the education sector while making sure to set aside an appropriate amount of time for the students who require more breaks during the literacy pullouts with patience and understanding. 
She is currently serving in the Eastern region of the DR. Community Economic Development. Community Economic Development volunteers have the opportunity to collaborate with a variety of community counterparts to lead training seminars around financial management skills for women's groups, small business owners, and students. However, the most fun and effective way that we feel confianza is by participating in beloved national sports like pelota or baseball. Priscilla is a CED volunteer who, as a part of her integration, learned some baseball to play with her community members. Anna was a former volunteer who worked with small agricultural cooperatives in her community. CED volunteers give lectures about employability and business skills to young people in high schools too. Doing fun activities to learn integration skills and working as a team is a big part of the volunteers training. No matter where you come from or who you are, you will always find someone willing to help you in your work. Muchísimas gracias, and thank you so much for your time and attendance during this presentation. You can find the contact information for the Peace Corps Dominican Republic on the screen here. So please come join SERVE. The Dominican Republic awaits you. Wow, thank you, Peace Corps Dominican Republic. And I must say that the volunteers that created that video really did an amazing job. Well done, guys. Well done. Um, so Peace Corps, looks like our trip around the world has come to an end. But before we go, just a reminder that we have a full week of events. Uh, tomorrow, we have another featured event, which is our Franklin H. Williams Awards in honor of one of the original architects of the Peace Corps. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow evening, actually, as we honor the incredible contributions of emerging leaders and returned Peace Corps volunteers of color and a non-RPCV whose work exemplifies a lifelong commitment to civic engagement and the Peace Corps' mission of world peace and friendship. And I think that Peace Corps Dominican's presentation and the last slide actually sum things up perfectly. Come, join, and serve. So now on behalf of the Peace Corps family, we want to thank all of you. We want to thank especially our, pre our presenters for today. And we want to thank you all for joining us. It has been a pleasure uh, to be your MC. And on that note, happy Peace Corps week, everyone.